Yes, my lord. Thank you, my lord. That's all. I'll, I'll, I'll take that time. My lord, I will begin first of all by submitting on the practical implications of the orders of the proceedings before your brother Justice Mugambi. Uh, in uh, petition 522 of 2024 vis-a-vis -vis these proceedings. My Lord, and I want to make the firm submission that, my Lord, the petitioner in this matter, who is the petitioner in 522, of 2024 is precluded by the doctrine of estoppel of record. From raising issues, and my learned colleague Mr. Paul Nyamundi has raised these issues, raised this point, issues that he has raised in that in petition 522 in this instant petition. My Lord, let me just be very clear that in 522 of 2024, my learned colleague, Mr. Ongoya, as, uh, led by Senior Counsel Paul Mwite and assisted by Faith Waigu and, and Mr. Mashare, who are in these proceedings, firmly told the court and submitted in this very bench that they were not pursuing the prayer for conservatory orders. At that very moment when they were making those submissions, the proceedings in the National Assembly with respect to impeachment, phase one, had been concluded. But my Lord, they only pursued one question. That is the question of certification. My Lord, actually, if you look at the proceedings, they raised an objection. My Lord, they raised an objection, my Lord, to our submissions opposing conservatory orders, stating that uh, it was not one of the matters which they wanted canvassed. But my Lord, the implication of these submissions... Yes, my Lord. In, in petition 522 of 2024, because according to them, they didn't want to argue that petition, that aspect of the prayers. All they wanted was for certification. So, my Lord, if you now look at the ruling of Justice Mugambi, he only addressed the issue of certification. So that, my Lord, in terms of the implication, our submission is that if there is any value to be derived, to be derived from this application, the value is for them to ask that this application be consolidated with Petition 522 of 2024. My Lord, that will be, in, will be consistent with the Mutunga rules, especially rule two. And my Lord, public policy in the judicial decision making. My Lord, public policy in the judicial decision making. My Lord, which requires consistency that litigants need to lay a platform for, for consistency in the judicial decision making. So that there is no conflict from decisions which are rendered by our honorable judges. So, my Lord, that public policy will be given effect by the order for consolidation. Which, my Lord, you have jurisdiction, uh, inherent jurisdiction, to make even when they have not asked for that order today. 
you have inherent jurisdiction to make. My Lord, I'll briefly mention the test on the ground of conservatory orders. My Lord, they have submitted, the, the petition has submitted that uh, he wants conservatory orders to stop proceedings in the Senate. My Lord, my submission is that if you examine the nature of proceedings for impeachment, my Lord, Article 145, these proceedings have not completed. My Lord, proceedings in the, in the, in the, in the, in the National Assembly and proceedings in the Senate are one continuum. My Lord, both the National Assembly and the Senate are... So, my Lord, there is no decision yet by this arm of government with respect to impeachment to, of necessity, require this court to issue conservatory orders at this stage of these proceedings. So, my Lord, if you look at the test for the grant of conservatory orders, which my colleague, Senior Counsel Paul Mute cited, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the case of Peter Gaterao Munya. My Lord, my colleague didn't cite the last part of the test. My Lord, which requires you to consider, my Lord, and make a delicate decision. Apply, apply the doctrine of restraint and make a delicate juridical decision to allow these proceedings to go on. Why, my Lord? Because of a foremost constitutional value known as the, the, doc, the constitutional doctrine known as the doctrine of separation of powers. My Lord, these proceedings which are before the Senate are, are legitimate constitutional proceedings. My Lord, public participation has been conducted. They, are, they can question the adequacy of that public participation, but my Lord, public participation has been conducted to a sufficient degree of acceptability. My Lord, that is why in the, in the response, my Lord, you can see numbers being quoted by the petitioner. So, my Lord, if I submit that if there was no public participation in these proceedings, in the impeachment proceedings, my Lord, then that will have made a lot of sense to injunct the proceedings at any time when the petitioner comes to court. Because, my Lord, public participation is a core constitutional value. So, my Lord, because public participation has been conducted, the delicate exercise of judicial function the petitioner comes to court because, my Lord, public participation is a core constitutional value. So, my Lord, because public participation has been conducted, the delicate exercise of judicial function, my Lord, then requires that you hold on a little bit. You don't issue precipitate conservatory orders to stop this legitimate constitutional process of impeachment. My Lord, the, the implication on the opposite side is this. My Lord, these proceedings are, are not about criminality, impeachment proceedings. My Lord, they are about political responsibility. And my Lord, in the design of the 2010 Constitution, my Lord, they exist in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the constitutional legal order for good reasons, my Lord. My Lord, they exist so that the legislative arm of government is able to hold certain state officers, my Lord, into account. So, my Lord, they are not illusory or unknown proceedings to law. They are proceedings which are recognized by Article 150, Article 145, and Article 146 of the Constitution. 
My Lord, secondly, these proceedings are time bound. My Lord, in the case of Justice Kariuki Mate, and my Lord, this, 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 the, the, the case of Justice Kariuki Mate, my Lord, is a typical case, <coughs> my Lord, for you to apply in this matter. Because, my Lord, the facts appear to be tailored for this kind of situation. My Lord, petition uh, 32 of 2014, Justice Kariuki Mate <coughs> versus Martin Nyaga Ombora. A similar. A similar matter, my lord, where you, the, 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 the my lord, petition number 32 of 2014. My lord, and I would like to briefly, my lord, reflect on uh, what the Supreme Court has said in paragraph 83 of this decision. Paragraph 83 of the judge of, of, of the decision. 83, my lord. So, my lord, the Supreme Court is asking itself a question. That, my lord, shall expate orders be issued And in this case, my Lord, we are reformulating by, 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 by interpreting because the, the implication is the same. Be issued, my Lord, with respect to proceedings which are active before the legislative arm of government. And my Lord, you can see here, the, the Supreme Court is, is restating the doctrine of separation of powers as one of the principles which shall guide you in that paragraph 83. Because, my Lord, the, the implication of the conservatory orders is that then the proceedings, these time-bound proceedings, my Lord, my Lord, these time-bound proceedings before the legislative arm of government will then be stopped. And, my Lord, I submit that it is not unique for the Constitution to require this kind of Proceedings to be, to be time bound. And my Lord, in paragraph 84, to require that you exercise what the, the Supreme Court judges are called inner restraint. Inner restraint. Because, and my Lord, uh, the Supreme Court is saying, exercise this inner restraint in the context of express mandate allocated under the Constitution to Parliament. And my Lord, the idea is to circumvent and avoid conflict and crisis. Conflict and crisis in the discharge of constitutional responsibility. So my Lord, we are urging that you give difference. That my Lord, you allow at this point in time these proceedings to go on before the legislative body and to exercise judicial restraint and not to issue conservatory orders. My Lord, exercising judicial restraint, and, I, and I, as I submitted, is in line with the test for the grant of conservatory orders in Peter Gatirao Munya. My Lord, again, on the, on the second limb on that question, My Lord, they have imputed, the petitioners have said that standing orders number 64, my Lord, does not provide for adequate time to do public participation. My Lord, they made that submission. And my Lord, I would like you to look at, uh, at the same decision of Kariuki Mate, paragraph 93. Because, my Lord, standing order number 64 is made pursuant to the provisions of the Constitution. Yes. 
My Lord, standing order number 64 is made for person to the provisions of the Constitution. And here, my Lord, the Supreme Court is saying that this standing the orderly conduct of the, the, the business, the operations within the legislative arm of government. So, my Lord, I want to submit that these standing orders then enjoy the presumption of constitutionality. So, my Lord, the standing orders provide that if a motion is introduced before the House, the National Assembly, for the impeachment of President and Deputy President, my Lord, the standing orders require that that motion be dispensed of, my Lord, within seven days. My Lord, within seven days. And, my Lord, that takes us again back to the doctrine of time-bound proceedings. My Lord, within seven days. My Lord, what that means... So, which is, which law says seven days? My Lord, my Lord standing orders, my Lord. So, so that, my Lord, now going to the Constitution, my Lord, Article 145, on the removal of president, which, which Article 150 equates uh, that shall also apply for the removal of uh, deputy uh, president. My Lord, Article 145, Paragraph 3, also says, within seven days of receiving the resolution from the Speaker of the National Assembly. My Lord, within seven days from receiving this resolution from the National Assembly, my Lord, the Speaker of the Senate is supposed to commence action, proceedings to, towards the completion of the removal of, or, uh, or otherwise, of the deputy president. My Lord, the, to consider the motion, my Lord, to commence the proceedings to consider that motion for the removal of president, stroke deputy, uh, deputy president. My Lord, thereafter, they only have 10 other days my Lord, 10 other days to finish the process, to make a decision. My Lord, you can correlate this to Article 140 of the Constitution of Kenya, which requires that a question, a petition once presented to the Supreme Court for the validity of a presidential election must be determined within 14 days. So, my Lord, it's not unique for these proceedings to be determined in this manner. My, my, my Lord, there are constitutional policy reasons why that is the case. My Lord, perhaps because this position is important and stability of the nation is very critical, you don't want to keep people in abeyance on who is their president and deputy president. My Lord, the deputy president, when there's a vacancy in the office of president, they're supposed to assume office as president. So, my Lord, because of these constitutional timelines, then one of the reasons one, my Lord, can make is that because of the stability of the nation, you cannot have a vacancy in the office of uh, president and deputy president within this kind of periods. That is why the Constitution, my Lord, has set strict timelines concerning their removal from office or election into office. So, that, my Lord, my Lord, this is now tied on the public participation. So, that, my Lord, what happens? on the public participation, my Lord, is that whereas public participation is not provided for in Article 64 of the Standing Orders, my Lord, public participation is a constitutional imperative which so many authorities have laid down, and, uh, including this court, my Lord. So, my Lord, this constitutional imperative known as public participation must be done within the confines of the timelines which had been laid down. So, but the National Assembly was required to do public participation, but not within those timelines, and not create excuses. And, and, and my Lord, that's what the National Assembly did, public participation within the constitutional timelines. My Lord, submissions were made, was made by Senior Council Paul Mwiti on whether uh, a response by the Deputy President is needed when you are going to public participation. My Lord, in my view, that is stretching the issue too far. My Lord, what is before the House of the National Assembly 
is often a motion. And my Lord, the Constitution talks about a motion for the removal of deputy president. My Lord, that motion, before it is determined, public participation must be conducted. So, my Lord, the obligation of Parliament is to ensure that that motion goes to the people. For them to air their views on what they think the motion, uh, what, on, on what they think the elected members should do with the motion. And my Lord, Parliament, they exercise it directly or indirectly through their elected representatives. So, my Lord, there is no obligation whatsoever to send, to send a response to the people. Because by that time, there are no proceedings contemplated in the standing orders for pre-impeachment public participation. Because there, there is no motion. It will be speculative to go to the people with a motion which has not been introduced to the House for, 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 for adjudication. Just like this court cannot adjudicate my lord on a petition which is not before it. People will be talking to the media about the petition, but the High Court will only be seized of that petition when it is brought before it. My lord, that is very important to, to distinguish. And my lord, the efficacy of, uh, or adequacy of this, of this public partic uh, participation <laughs> see that at this stage of the proceedings. My Lord, the petitioner is inviting you to make conclusive determination on the question of public participation. My Lord, the response from the National Assembly that public participation was indeed done, and the mere fact that it was done, then, my Lord, you cannot uh, consider that at, on merits uh, at this stage. So, my Lord, we urge that you don't uh, uh, grant the conservative orders. So, my Lord, the, 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 the application of the conservative orders will to destabilize process which is before the Senate. But there is no timeline, there is no guideline on what happens when the court has issued conservatory orders. What happens to the timelines in Article uh, 145? What happens to those timelines when conservatory orders are issued? But the doctrine of proportionality in the Mutunga rules require that you exercise some restraint as not to issue conservatory orders at this stage. My Lord, uh, Senior Counsel Paul Mitter talked about gross violation of the Constitution as one of the grounds he says the motion does not meet the motion for impeachment. But my Lord, again, in the Sonko case, this, the, the Supreme, Supreme Court has said the role of the court is not to look at the needs of these allegations. My Lord, instead, the High Court is supposed to just look at the process, process, process issues. Have we, have, has the National Assembly complied with the standing orders and the provisions of Article 145? My Lord, if the answer is yes, then my Lord, you allow those proceedings to continue and conclude. But now that my colleague, Senior Counsel, talked about gross violation of the Constitution, my Lord, allow me to say that indeed, from the motion, the Deputy President, there are serious allegations that the Deputy President is facing. And my Lord, as I wind up, my Lord, the Deputy President is participating in the proceedings before the Senate. My Lord, that is important. He is participating in the proceedings before the Senate as we speak. So, my Lord, he cannot approbate and reprobate. He cannot participate in the proceedings before the Senate. My Lord, yes, my Lord, the process is going on. My Lord, uh, allow me to quote a, a document, my Lord, which, because uh, uh, I'm, I'm not speaking from the back. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. From a response which was filed, uh, which, which we have filed, and which also my colleague uh, 
a file my lord an affidavit supplementary affidavit by regarding kashagwa my lord this is what they have next my lord they have, they have, they have next uh, a letter from the senate inviting them to submit a response by 5 p.m. today stating that the motion is before the house they were given material which uh, uh, constitute this motion and they were required to file a response my lord under article 145 of the of the constitution those proceedings have already commenced my lord what i'm saying is that the 10 the 10 days for the senate to consider that question have already commenced the proceedings are active before the senate Yes, yes, yes. Not a document that That's correct, my lord. So can you explain ourselves to that point? Okay, my lord. I will, I will rephrase them, by, my, my lord, by saying that uh, the Senate has invited the Deputy President yeah, that's fine. Yes, to, uh, to appear, my lord, before, before it to answer on these weighty allegations which the petitioner says concern gross violation of the Constitution. My Lord, now that brings out a fundamental point. My Lord, he has opportunity in accordance with the provisions of Article, 1, uh, Article 50 of the Constitution. My Lord, he has opportunity to air his grievance in a trial process at the Senate. My Lord, that's a fundamental tenet of the doctrine of natural justice. He has been given opportunity to come and ventilate his concerns about public participation, content of their motion, the allegations he is facing. He has opportunity to ventilate those concerns in a quasi-judicial process, my Lord. My Lord, quasi-judicial process. So, my Lord, it's better that we allow him to exercise his opportunity to appear before this quasi-judicial process for the trial of these allegations. My Lord, the issuance of conservatory orders will deny the parties that opportunity to subject the allegations against him in a constitutionally tested and compliant process of impeachment. My Lord, the senators act as jurors as, uh, in this case, stroke judges. My Lord, they are required to make up their, 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 to decide on each and every allegation that he is facing. So, my, my Lord, the doctrine of ripeness then applies against the Deputy President at this stage of the proceedings. My Lord, his complaint is not ripe for judicial adjudication yet. My Lord, as, as I submit, as I wind up, the roof is not on fire. My Lord, the, the, courts of, the, the, the doors of this court have not closed at him to come and ventilate his concerns about the entire process completed. But after the impeachment proceedings have concluded. And my Lord, this is the tenor and the effect of their submit in Petition 522 of 2024. Where whereas conservatory orders were sought they abandoned the quest for conservatory orders in 522 of 2024. My Lord, the quest concerning public participation have been certified as raising substantial questions of law in 522 of 2024. My Lord, there's a prayer on arresting, suspending, or interfering the decision of arresting, suspending, or interfering the decision of the Senate in 522-2024. And my Lord, those proceedings any time now will be before a three-judge bench for adjudication. My Lord, to extend that that prayer is live in procedure actively pending for another bench, Then in these proceedings, 
they will be doing what we call lemon selling. If they seek conservatory orders, this proceedings, they'll be doing what we call lemon selling. My Lord, I rest, uh, I guess, and, cons and uh, pray that you don't uh, consider granting the orders for conservatory orders at this stage. Indeed, my Lord, we, if, if, if there's any decision with respect to consolidation, my Lord, we concede that this petition can be consolidated with petition 522. My Lord, for good, uh, for good order, my Lord, so that there is no conflict in terms of decisions which are made by the High Court on the same subject matter, my Lord. My Lord, with respect to the same petitioner, my Lord, the same petitioner. Thank you, my Lord. My Lord, um, yes, I have my time. Yes, my Lord. Yes, of the. Although I understand. Yes.